Okay, today I'm going to be doing the impossible and showing you how to mix oil and water without any other added ingredients. I'm going to show you how you can actually mix them together and not separate. So we've always been taught that oil and water do not mix together. In fact, it's such a famous mantra that whenever we have two things that don't go together, we often compare them to oil and water. But is that actually true? Well, today I'm going to show you a method that you can actually mix oil and water together without any other ingredient and not have them separate. Let me show you. So we've all seen what happens when you pour oil in water. So I have here just some regular tap water and then some canola oil, some vegetable oil here. And you can see when I pour it on top here, the oil just floats to the top. So you can see that this clearly forms two liquid layers here. So there's two phases of liquid, an oil-rich phase and a water-rich phase. And even if you shake this up, at first it looks like you mixed them. But if you let it sit for a little bit, But now watch what happens if I add a little mustard to this. And give it a shake. So now let's see if this separates. So you can see that now the water and oil don't mix out. Now the reason this happens is because when you shake up oil and water, oil is hydrophobic and so they form tiny little balls that don't want to be attracted to the water. But if those tiny little droplets of oil come near each other, then they will now be attracted to each other because they're more attracted to each other than the water around them, so they'll form one big drop of oil. But if you add an ingredient like mustard, mustard has some chemicals in it that are called surfactants or emulsifiers. And what an emulsifier means is it's a chemical that has a hydrophobic end and a hydrophilic end. So the hydrophilic end is attracted to the water and the hydrophobic end is attracted to the oil. So it sticks these little tails down into the oil and the heads of them surround the oil. So now when these two droplets come together, these hydrophilic ends, they repel each other and the two droplets can't coalesce together to form one bigger droplet. So it keeps these droplets all stable and they never come together and separate out from the water. You can also even use egg yolks as an emulsifier. So egg yolks have something in them called lecithin and the lecithin acts as an emulsifier and keeps the oil separated in the water. So that's why eggs help out in baking things with oil in them because the eggs can actually help the oil mix in with the water. But here's the question, in these two examples, we actually had to add an emulsifier to the water. So that's kind of cheating a little bit because it's not actually mixing oil and water, it's mixing oil, water, and an emulsifier together to get a mixture that stays stable. But is it actually possible to just mix oil with water? Well, according to a chemist at the Australian National University, he says that it is actually possible to mix oil and water without any other added emulsifier. Let me show you how to do it. Now, in order to understand how to do this without an emulsifier, let me go back to the example where we have two oil droplets that come together. So one reason the oil droplets are attracted together is because actually in water, there's tiny little molecules of dissolved gas. So there's tiny little nitrogen and oxygen molecules. And when enough of those dissolved gas molecules form on the outside of the oil, it forms a tiny, tiny, tiny little air pocket around it. And because of the surface tension of the air pocket around it, it actually makes those tiny little oil droplets more likely to come together and attract each other because the surface tension pushes them together when they come close. And so it takes a lot less energy for these oil droplets to come together to form one big droplet if there's dissolved air in the water. Basically what it means is that you'll be able to have a stable mixture of oil and water that won't join back together no matter how long you leave it. The same thing that I got when I mixed my egg or my mustard together, but I didn't have to add a third ingredient. So here's how I'm gonna test this. I have two beakers of water here, and I'm going to degas one of them, meaning I'm just gonna stick it in my vacuum chamber and let all the dissolved gases come out of it, 
and then I just have a normal beaker of water here and I'm gonna put a drop of oil in this one and a drop of oil in this one and shake them up and see which one looks cloudier. And the cloudier one means that there's still tiny droplets of oil in it. And so the cloudier one means that it was able to actually mix the oil and water together. So let's degas this water first. Okay, so I now have my degassed water right here. Pull it into here, try not to introduce too much air into it. Okay, now I'm gonna put three drops of oil in each. And shake, 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 shake. Let's add some more oil. Let's add 10 more drops. Okay, let's let these sit for a little bit and look at the color in a, let's let these sit for about 10 minutes and then look at the color of them. Okay, you can see the difference in the colors now. This is the one that had the degassed water and this is the one that had regular water. So you can see how much more cloudy this one is. Look at the blue reflection in the background and see how clear it is in this one and how cloudy it is in this one. So it's cloudier because that means that those tiny little droplets of oil, when I shook it up, they're staying as tiny little drops of oil. Whereas these coalesced and all the oil floated to the top. And so this will actually stay as a stable mixture of oil and water indefinitely. It won't ever separate again back into oil and water. So that means if you want to mix a lot of oil and water together without any other emulsifier or any other ingredient in it, you just do it in a vacuum chamber. So see how they're separate layers now? Put them in the vacuum chamber. So now we'll have the advantage of degassing the water and the oil. So we'll get all of the gas out of it and so they should mix together really well now. Okay, so now that it's been completely degassed, lit in the air. And look at this now. <laughs> So cool. So we formed a pretty good emulsified mixture of oil and water just by mixing it in a vacuum chamber. Now after a while this does still separate out. The oil will float to the top because I had a lot of oil in there. But you can see at the bottom this kind of white layer. Now that's the cloudy emulsified layer. And so because we did it in a vacuum it's able to keep those tiny little bubbles of emulsified oil in the water just by simply not having air around it. And so we were able to show that just by taking the air out of water, you're actually able to form this emulsified mixture of oil and water that doesn't separate over time. Even when you reintroduce it back to air, it doesn't separate out. It's pretty cool. So this is actually a really cool discovery and it has some really cool implications. Basically, it means that degassed water can act the same as soapy water. So this has some really cool implications. Basically, it means that you can use degassed water the same as you use soapy water. It should be able to clean grease off similar to soapy water. Now the scientists that discovered this, they're not exactly sure the mechanism behind it. One of their hypotheses is the one that I explained earlier about the air around the uh, oil bubbles but there could be other things going on and they're not exactly sure why degassed water works so well in making emulsifications like this. But they're doing a lot of research into it because basically it makes a clean source for cleaning up oil spills. Or it could even be used in industry to emulsify different oils in water just by using degassed water. I'll put a link to some of the articles that talk about this method of emulsification by using degassed water. I'll put it in my description. And if you haven't checked out the Action Lab subscription box, head over to theactionlab.com. I'm getting a lot of great feedback about the first Action Lab subscription box, the vacuum chamber. People love it. I've seen a lot of unboxing videos people have sent me. They've shown me their kids doing experiments with the vacuum chamber, putting different things in it. It's really cool. So if you haven't checked it out, head over to theactionlab.com. And I'll also put some links if you wanna see some unboxing of the vacuum chamber, one that I've done and one that other people have posted and done. So I'll put those in my description also. 
And thanks for watching another episode of The Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified when my latest video's out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.